In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the most valuable things that you need to know to guarantee success after college. Make sure you guys stay to the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing things that they honestly don't talk about and they honestly don't emphasize enough in college and they really should. If you're just starting your computer science journey, this will be perfect for you to have in the back of your mind. And if you're already a computer science student, you can kind of see, am I doing these things and know if you're on the right track. All right, so if you're new to my channel, a little bit about me. My name is Kazim, I'm a new grad software engineer and I currently live in Seattle, Washington. I do a little bit of everything on this page from vlogs, sharing my experience as a software engineer, from coding, to also sharing advice on how you can land your next software engineering internship or job. And I don't like to sugarcoat things on this channel because I know it definitely can be a struggle, but at the same time, I'm here to tell you if you put in that work, it is definitely doable. So you guys should definitely check out my other videos and give me a subscribe so you aren't missing out on new videos. And if you're not new to the page, welcome back Dream Team. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about the most valuable things that you need to know to guarantee success after college. So let's go. All right, so number one, start ahead of time, especially with learning programming languages. A huge portion of your computer science degree is gonna be coding, learning how to code, coding projects, all of those things. So if you already have the knowledge of programming languages, it's gonna make your life that much easier. One of the biggest advantages of being a computer science student is being able to learn coding without actually even needing to step into the university. You can learn, you have so many free resources online that will teach you coding for free. Not only that, but when you learn the basics of your coding language, this is going to help you with landing that internship in the future, which we're going to touch on later in this video. But you definitely want to get ahead of the game if you can and start learning programming languages. I always say one of the programming languages that I recommend you learn first is Python. The reason why I may be a little bit biased because that's the first language that I learned. But the reason why I recommend this is because not only is Python a super popular language and a lot of universities teach this language, but it's also very easy to learn so it's a great language to you know test the waters with and actually understand you know what is coding about can i do this how is it going to be like when i'm you know coding in class and stuff like that also something very very key that i forgot to mention here is not only can you you know get ahead and learn programming languages but you can be very very strategic and learn the programming languages that your college or university is going to teach you in your computer science program so you can head over to their website and check the courses and be strategic and learn those programming languages so when it comes time to taking that class is literally a piece of cake and if you do want to get started some resources that i know that you know teach python for free code academy freedcodecamp.org coursera the list goes on and on honestly just a quick google search will do it so i always stress this start learning programming languages because it's going to be a, a really core foundation for a lot of other things in the future now when i say start ahead i'm not only just talking about programming languages i'm also talking about your coursework in school and your assignments when you're given an assignment a project whatever it is you want to start ahead of time because as a computer science student you're going to run into difficulties you're going to run into hurdles and you want to be able to overcome those hurdles as quick as possible and not waiting to the last minute because take it from me i feel like i had to learn the hard way when it came to this type of stuff like i procrastinated until the last minute for assignments and it really just you know, came back to bite me in the butt at the end. And honestly, you might get away with procrastinating. Like, let's be real. People do all the time and they get away with it, but it hinders your overall learning and your overall growth. That small portion of time that you spent to quickly complete an assignment, it does not equate to if you were to initially have started the assignment earlier and just gradually learned and progress as you went. Don't hinder your learning, don't cheat, because especially in the beginning, it's gonna be very essential for your growth and foundation as a computer science student. And you know, it just progressively gets harder. So start off strong and start off by starting ahead of time and just doing what you gotta do. All right, so number two is to not waste time getting an internship. Getting an internship is one of the best things that you can do in your college career. And I'll tell you why. When you get an internship, this is going to give you actual real experience of what the industry is like. If you want to be a software engineer, getting a software engineering internship is going to actually tell you what is it like after college working as a software engineer. 
School is not going to tell you that. School is going to prepare you, of course, by teaching you how to code, teaching you CS theory, all of that type of stuff. But actually applying it in real life, an internship is going to do that for you. Not only that, but what a lot of people don't realize is if you get an internship and you do really well, oftentimes the company will say, you know, I really enjoyed you as an intern. We want you to return back to our company. And if you're a third year finishing up and you get that internship, they can say return back full time after college. That's exactly what we want. We want to get that job after college and that an internship is a great way to do that. Not only that, but an internship, they're not expecting you to know everything. They're expecting you to have only minimal knowledge, which is perfect because they're welcoming the learning. They're welcoming the fact that you don't know everything and the fact that you're here to learn and grow as an individual. So it's lower expectations with all of the benefit. Most of the times you'll be getting paid to get do an internship. Most of the times you might be in a different city, which is which might be a great experience for you. There's so many perks and benefits to being an intern and then also converting that to full time. So definitely try your best to get an internship and know you do not have to wait to your junior year to get an internship. A lot of people say, OK, freshman year, sophomore year, I'm not going to get an internship. I'm going to wait. But the earlier, the better. There are tons of internships for freshmen and sophomore. I know Google has a program, Microsoft has a program, Amazon have a program. Those are just some at the top of my head, but there's tons of opportunities if you do the research of companies that are providing internship opportunities for freshmen and sophomores. And if your junior year is coming up, I don't want you to feel like you also can't get an internship for your junior year summer. I'm a testimony of that. I got my very first internship my junior year summer. So don't think it's too late because it's never too late but I'm just saying try your best to get it as early as possible. So definitely don't wait, you know, get that real industry experience as soon as you can. All it really takes is for you to have some basic knowledge of a programming language, which is why I mentioned earlier, you know, to start ahead and learning a programming language, because this is going to help you when you're applying for internships and you have to do a technical portion in the interview, you're going to have knowledge of a programming language that you've already been studying for prior to. Once you start learning that programming language, you'll start learning data structures and algorithms, which will help you with the technical interview. And don't worry if you don't know like much of what that is. I'm going to be explaining more on my channel and I'm going to be going in depth of how you can get an internship like step by step from learning data structures and algorithms to setting up your resume to applying all of those things. So make sure you are subscribed and you are tuning in because more informational videos will be coming on the topic soon. All right, so number three is to take networking seriously and network with the people around you. I feel like your network is going to provide so much value to you in ways that you might not even know right now. Um, but it's just best to network with people and gain that connection because that can honestly last outside of getting a computer science degree and outside of college. Those connections that you make with people can help you later in life in ways that you might not even know it. A great way to connect with somebody is just by getting their LinkedIn. Honestly, LinkedIn is great for that. Just, you know, having that mutual connection, you know, your peers, your professors, your tutors, connect with them on LinkedIn and give them a follow on LinkedIn and you'll see their mutual, see who they're connected to. And that can put you in connection with an opportunity in the future. You never know, but you have to start by networking and getting those connections because it's super important. You know, when you graduate and you have your degree, you have your degree, but you want to have more than that. You know, like having that network of people saying like, you know, these were the peers that I connected with. We work together and you know, that kind of builds up your reputation and makes you more credible. And also like you're with your peers, these are genuine connections that you're making you guys are going to bond over being you know computer science students and struggling in the major together and you know working through it so having those connections is always going to be good because you have like people to fall back on you have people to study with you have people to talk about brainstorm problems with and, and get through hurdles so definitely I know for me like I had a I had a group of people that I could always like rely on to study or you know just bounce ideas off of and that's what you need in order to survive the major. Like you can do it alone, but it's gonna be a rough journey if you just try to do everything alone. You have to net you have to bounce off the people around you and really network. And trust me, I'm very much <laughs> to with being to myself, but you learn how to be social and you learn how to get these connections and make them worthwhile. And honestly, like I talked about LinkedIn. I literally had a friend in college who put me on so much game. Like they had their LinkedIn in order, like they applied themselves, like the projects they've done 
any opportunities that they've had they they just put it into one and it honestly inspired me to just get my life and my linkedin together and just really apply myself like anything that i was doing i applied it to my linkedin and just really you know it's my portfolio is what i'm showcasing to the world professionally and it's how you also can get jobs so linkedin is a great tool i think and i definitely think that you should take advantage of it while you're in college because one thing that you have in common with all of your peers your professors your tutors is that you guys are at the same university so take advantage of that and network with people all right so the next one is to do side projects outside of school it's not enough to just do the assigned projects that you're given in class when you're actually going to start learning and actually find out what you're super interested in is when you do outside projects outside of school where you're in charge of what the project is you're in charge of you know what you're going to be learning so that's where you, the interest comes in and you really find out what you're passionate about not only that but it shows great initiative when you do a side project that wasn't assigned to you in school that's something that you can add on your resume that looks good to companies it shows that you set aside time to work on things that you're passionate about and that you actually care about and it shows that to companies when you're applying for that internship or for that job and trust me i know you already have all of this course load so it's like you have to find time to do more projects outside of school but honestly you find the time and you will make the time like as a CS student I remember for me like I did projects during the summer when I had time and honestly it was really fun just finding out what am I really interested in and you know all of the different things and all of the learnings that I can actually apply to a project you know we talked about learning that programming language ahead of time and, and when you start to grasp the programming language and have a good understanding and have a good foundation that's when you can actually apply your learnings into an actual project that's tangible and feasible for something that you know you find interesting so definitely take the time to work on outside projects which will help you learn more it'll help you add things to your resume which makes you look good to companies and honestly it'll just help you find your interest and your passion for computer science all right so the next one is to not struggle in silence if you're the type of person to struggle in silence we're not doing that no more we're, we're done with that listen computer science is hard it's very very difficult and like i've been saying you're going to face hurdles you're going to face challenges and you're going to need to overcome them and sometimes you're not going to overcome them alone you need to just reach out and get some help and if you're that type of person that just likes to struggle in silence by yourself you're not going to get very far you have to at some point be able to reach out for help is and don't get me wrong it's actually pretty good to struggle with something first and not just immediately seek for help but struggle for a little bit time box it give yourself a couple hours or give yourself maybe a day like i'm gonna struggle with this i'm gonna work with this but after that day i'm seeking help i'm going to office hours i'm reaching out to my professor i'm reaching out to some tutors because struggling in silence is not it and all it's going to bring you is pain i'm telling y'all from experience seriously like do not struggle in silence office hours is a great resource i feel like i was i was using office hours up once i really realized the benefit of it before i wasn't taking advantage of it but later down in my computer science career i was and i'm going to tell you guys a brief story of how office hours i feel like saved my career so my very last quarter as a computer science student i only needed three classes that quarter like you know it was the end I had planned it out really well and I knew all the classes that I was going to take because I had planned it ahead of time and you know I was on it I was chilling I wanted it to be a chill quarter well it didn't happen that way just my luck one of the classes that I needed that was required for my major in order to graduate they were not offering that class that quarter and the substitute class that they had that fulfilled that requirement that was a master's program class now i remember that class like it was yesterday it was a relational database class that they were teaching in c plus plus and that class y'all that class was the hardest class i have ever taken in my life that wasn't meant for undergraduate students that was a master's program class but it was the only class that they had that they were offering to fulfill my requirement and the, the i had to take it in order for me to graduate literally i had to take it when i tell you guys the project scores were coming out. People were getting 30%, 20%, 40%. It was such a low average in that class. And bruh, I was struggling. I was fighting for my life. All of my friends knew at the time from Monday through Sunday, I was working on this class, working on a project for this class from morning to night. I was struggling and the professor knew I was struggling. You know why? Because I was in office hours whenever he offered it, man. 
And that was very intentional on my part because I wanted him to know that I'm not BSing. Like I'm showing up and I'm asking like the questions that are hard and I'm really here fighting for this grade to pass this class. So I want you to know like I'm struggling. And a lot of people don't know, but that has a lot of benefit that you wouldn't expect. I feel like me doing that, me showing up in office hours and me really fighting, that saved me in that class. When it came down to final grades, I know for a fact that professor just rounded me to the minimum that I needed to pass the class. And that's all I needed. That's all I needed. I took that and I, and I, I was done. And I feel like he did that because he knew that I put in the work and that I was actively coming to office hours and showing up. You know, I've had professors where I did not come to the office hours for the entire quarter. And by the end of the quarter, I'm like, hey, is there any extra credit opportunities? Uh, uh, uh. They look at me like, no, I don't even know who you are. You never even showed up to my office hours. You never showed up to anything. So why would I help you out with any extra credit opportunities to raise your grade? You see how that works? So honestly, just show up, introduce yourself, build that connection. We talked about building that network, build that network with your professors, your tutors, everybody. And you know, that will help you. That will have a long lasting effect on you passing the class maybe or your grade whatever but you know just build that connection and go to office hours and reach out for help when you really need it it's very very important to not struggle in silence for me the way that i think about it you know how they say it takes a village to raise a child i think we like like the, it takes a village to get that computer science degree like it takes everybody it takes all of the resources in your disposal and you have to use it because it's there for a reason all right you guys that is everything that i have for now hopefully it was very valuable to you and if it was be sure to give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and honestly share this with another computer science student that you think can get some value get some use out of it that would really help my channel out a lot but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i have a ton of other informative videos coming soon so make sure you stick around and don't miss out and i'll catch you guys in my next video peace